my it's World Book Day today, and I have a zit on my forehead. Sorry about your zit, but World Book Day. World Book Day. Welcome to The Ship Show. Today we're going to be talking about libraries and books. We also have a fun conversation with Erica Long, a middle school librarian from Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah, make sure to check out our chat with Erica later on in the episode. Like a book from the library, because you check things out from the library. Get it, Maya? What? What? Maya? Maya? Wasn't that bad. Sorry about that. Anyway, we have some cool news. Alex and I have our first book coming out. Our book is called Kudo Kids, The Mystery of the Masked Medalist. And it's about another set of siblings, Mika and Andy Kudo, who go on an exciting adventure at the Summer Olympics. I bit my tongue. (laughs) (laughs) You're just so excited. We've been working on it since the fall of 2018, and it's finally coming out on September 8th, 2020. We can't wait for you to read it, and we'll be sharing more as we get closer to September. More cool news. We have our own read poster. I remember being a young kid, and oh, those were the days. And going to the library and seeing all the celebrity read posters on the wall, and now Maya and I have our own. (laughs) It's crazy. (laughs) It's so cool. It's so cool. It's really awesome. Neil has one, Yoda has one, and now we have one too. As if that wasn't enough, we're also the 2020 National Library Week Honorary Chairs. I'm an honorary chair. Not like how you think, Alex. No, I'm pretty sure I know what it means. No, mm mm-mm. I think so. I don't think so. I'm a chair. Nope. Chair. Mm -mm. (laughs) Mm-mm. Libraries are amazing, and so are chairs. But National Library Week is a time to celebrate the many contributions of libraries and librarians. Even though we have to celebrate from home and we can't go to our libraries in person, libraries are open for business online and provide virtual services and digital content that communities need now more than ever. Yeah, you can access ebooks, music, movies, video games, virtual story times, and so much more, all from the comfort of your own home. You seem so excited, Alex. I am super excited, Maya. So let's get to our conversation with Erica. Hello. Hey. Welcome. Hi. Erica, where are you calling us from? I am coming from Tennessee. I live in Nashville, Tennessee, and I am a secondary school librarian. I work with fifth through eighth graders at the largest middle school in our district. Lots of different types of students, um, lots of different languages spoken, lots of different types of learners. So we are really fortunate to have a community that embraces all of those different things um, to make us what we call a family. You seem really cool. So I'm sure that all the kids really love you. I like to think they do. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a great place. It's a busy place for sure. Um, students come in early in the morning before school starts and they're looking for books. They're playing games on the computer, um, just kind of getting their day started in a fun way, upbeat way. And they're there all day long, to be honest with you, whether I'm teaching classes or they're just coming in on their own or if they're coming in during their lunch periods. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's an exciting place. It's a busy place, but I like to think that they enjoy being there because they keep coming back. <laughs> I was wondering if you could share what people could do to access the resources that do exist at libraries, even though they might not be able to go there in person. Of course, um, whether you're in a school library or a public library or even academic library, um, most of us, if not all, have resources available on our websites. So for me and my school library, that means providing a place where my students can can get quick access to what we have available through our um, partnership with the public library, which is phenomenal. For other people around the country, that could be finding your local public library online where you can access audio books or eBooks. And even if you find yourself saying, you know, I prefer having a book in my hand to read, That's okay. I totally understand. You can always just give this a try. And even if you are just like, nope, not doing it, that's okay. (laughs) Your librarians will not be upset. Um, 
please, 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 if you decide that you're going to purchase books during this time, I encourage you, I beg you to purchase from your um, local independent bookstores to help keep those dollars in your community and to keep them going. What would you say is the most rewarding part of your job? I'd say the most rewarding part of my job is just the interactions with I have that I have with um, people every day, whether it's the adults in the building or the kids in my building who wish they were adults. Um, there's always some type of interaction that I get to have that is not the same today that it was yesterday. Okay, so here's another question. If you could be a character from any book for one day, who would it be and why? Ooh. Oh, I would be the little girl from the book. It's a picture book called Thank You, Amu, and Amu is spelled O-M-U. And it's by Oge Mora. It is the best book ever. And the reason that I would be that character is because um, Amu cooks for her neighbors and lots of people in the neighborhood and she's making this pot of stew that everyone smells down the street. And so oh, if I'm it hungry. smells that good down the street, then I want some. So I would be the little girl in that book. <laughs> oh, that's What's so answer. sweet is that the character that you want to be is someone that's doing something nice for everyone and you already do that with your job. <laughs> yeah, like you would think you'd want to mix it up and like be a character from a book that maybe isn't as generous in spirit or, you know, <laughs> You know, I'm going to have to think about that. I'm okay. sure there's somebody out there that I could do. <laughs> maybe maybe the Grinch. Oh, okay. That'd be fun. For a day, you know, one day. Yeah, just for a day. <laughs> what kinds of stories do you wish existed more? Um, stories I wish existed more. The first one is a story that's called For Black Girls Like Me. It's by Mariama Lockington. And she's close by. She's up in Kentucky. Um, that story is a kind of loosely based off of her life. She is a transracial adoptee, and I feel like there are not stories out there like that. And so what I would love to see come to shelves are stories by groups of people who are underrepresented. So I want to see the story about the the kid whose parent is incarcerated and they're still like thriving in life. I want to see the story about um, the, the kid who is learning how to navigate living between two houses because their parents are recently separated or divorced. So all those things that we know are happening in our world because it's just, it's the world that we live in. Those are the stories that I want to see so that every single person can see themselves on a page. And feel represented. Yeah, that's so important. More diverse stories, more diverse characters. That's what we're all about. When you go home after being at the library all day, do you speak loudly just for fun? <laughs> no. I will tell you what I do. I, every now and then I hear myself singing and dancing in silly ways. And I think that's because I got it from my mom. <laughs> the last fun question we have is, do you organize your shelves at home like you do at the library? Absolutely not. I do <laughs> not organize my shelves at home the way they are at school. I honestly organize them by color. So the mm. spine colors go um, Roji Biv. And I do that because it, it's easier for me to find them that way. Because sometimes I might forget the full title of a book, but I know what the cover looks like. And so mm. if it's in color order, I can easily go and find it. One last question before we leave, Erica. Um, yes. Are you reading more these days than you were before the pandemic started or about the same or less? It is, um, I'm reading more because I can get audio books and print books in at the same time, if that makes any sense. <laughs> and you can get audio books and print books digitally from yes. the library. The library. Yeah. Your local school or public library. And it's free. It's free. <laughs> yeah, wait, sorry. Erica, what was that? What are libraries again? It is, it is. Free. <laughs> oh, okay. I got you. Oh, okay. Whoa, that's amazing. Yeah. 
Okay. Good to know, yeah. That sounds really good. Before we go, Alex and Maya, can I just please say thank you for the work that you're doing. Um, what you're doing for Get Us PPE is amazing, and I appreciate everything you do. Thank you to the healthcare workers, the essential workers. We love you. And thank you so much, Erica. We, uh, gosh, this was so much fun. Everyone should check out Erica's Instagram, right? Yes, I bookstagram a lot. Find me on Instagram at not your mama's librarian. That's N-O-T-Y-O-M-A-M-A-S librarian. See you soon. I love it. Thank you all yeah. so much. Take care. Please stay, Please stay safe and yeah, take stay care. Healthy. You too, you too. And congratulations on your upcoming book. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Erica was great. Thanks for checking out our conversation like a book Alex from the Hardy. library. Alex, stop. Before we go, we wanted to send a special shout out to Save With Stories on Instagram. We joined Jennifer Garner and Amy Adams and recorded a video of ourselves reading a children's book. We read Dream Animals, A Bedtime Story by Emily Winfield Martin. And you can watch the video of our reading on the Save With Stories Instagram account. 30 million children rely on school for food. Responding to the needs of kids during these school closures, Save the Children and No Kid Hungry have a new fund, hashtag Save with Stories, to support food banks, mobile meal trucks, and community feeding programs with funds to do what they do best. If you can manage a one-time gift of $10, please text SAVE to 20222. If another amount works better for you, please visit their website, support.savethechildren.org. There is no maximum and no minimum. Every donation makes a difference. Thanks again for watching. We'll be back with another episode at some point. Uh, Maya, who, who are we talking to next? I don't know. Hmm. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, the ship show.